All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I wanted to kind of sit down and discuss a couple things today with regard to uh, search engine optimization and really where it's headed going into uh, 2014. Um, my name is Graham Ware. I am with OpZona. Uh, and what we actually do is focus on actually kind of doing an audit and quality check on any digital marketing or aspects that your company is presently uh actually paying for so in essence what we do is actually come in and we'll actually audit uh, your SEO your strategies uh, your digital marketing footprint any social media PPC any of that that your company is actually paying another company for to make sure that it is within compliance and that you are in essence actually getting uh, what you're paying for uh, we were founded in 2012 and really the reason for uh, how we evolved as one of the now industry leaders and or one of the major industry leaders is based on really the wave of grossly misleading and unethical practices that were happening in the digital marketing space there were several clients and customers and, and, and businesses that we encountered uh, day in and day out that were talking about how they were burned by an SEO company uh, so that really allowed us to kind of come together and identify an opportunity um, so we have uh, national international clients uh, around the company the country and around the world really that we actually will go in and work with and actually audit a lot of our uh, background really comes from big four and consulting uh, we have people from Accenture KPMG SAP a uh, few folks from Google uh, SEO Moz so really when you combine uh, not only the technical aptitude and the, the people that have actually worked for uh, the the major search engine type of corporations uh, combine that with you know big four consulting and in finance and accounting aspects it actually does make for a, a very holistic and successful kind of campaign and approach to this um, when we deal with uh, all the different various industries and businesses that we encounter so just to kind of give you an overview you know we as I said we quality check really your existing SEO and your digital uh, fulfillment we want to make sure that you know the performance and the programs that you're actually paying for have uh, long-term strategies we will actually go in and then analyze you know the margins look at yield rates your return of investment uh, do a capital investment analysis are you actually getting what you're paying for um, and then actually do that against you know the actual market itself and kind of incorporate some of the uh, forecasting there uh, the individuals within our organization are Google engaged certified Google Analytics certified uh, we are Google professionals so everything we do is within the Google quality guidelines and within the webmaster uh, guidelines as well At the end of the day we're here to basically audit and make sure that uh, you are in fact uh, not only getting what you're paying for but that it is progressing and in a manner that, that meets or exceeds kind of your expectation so in this presentation, I just kind of want to talk a little bit about the latest SEO updates, uh, why do you, you should be using SEO and kind of the future of SEO. We get a lot of people that kind of ask me uh, and other consultants, uh, you know, uh, where is Google going? What's happening? What are the major changes? Why should I be interested in all this? Um, first thing I do want to kind of lay out is what exactly is search engine optimization. Really, it's the technique of getting your website uh, on page one of Google, uh, Yahoo being all the major search engines, um, and that's also known as organic. Uh, there are ways you can actually come up with pay-per-click or AdWords um, and things of that nature, and we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later in this presentation. To give you guys a more thorough idea of how it actually works, it, it's kind of a common misunderstanding that Yahoo, Bing, and Google are actually the internet of the World Wide Web. I always kind of joke with uh, with my parents not to pick on them, but you know I'll say, hey, can you go check the internet for you know any restaurant specials? And you know they're on Google, and you know Google to them is is the World Wide Web, um, as it is to many, and that is an actual common misunderstanding. In fact, uh, search engines are really kind of data warehouses that store information, kind of like a card catalog, if you will. Uh, and what they do is they have search bots that will uh, go out and crawl uh, websites and web pages. And I kind of have honeybees on this slide because that's kind of what it's like com comparing to. You know, you have honeybees that will go out, gather pollen, and bring it back to the hive to make honey. 
These search bots in, uh, are basically tasked with over 223 algorithms. And so what they're basically set to do is go crawl every website, every web page, and gather information based on those algorithms. And then bring that back, and then depending upon uh, how those algorithms are uh, digesting and dissecting your website and your web pages, will then determine kind of where your index uh, and where you actually show up in the major search engines. And they associate that with a page ranking or, or an overall SEO ranking and score, if you will. So that just kind of gives you an idea, uh, kind of a 5,000 mile view of how exactly a search engine actually works and what they look at. So the question then is, you know, how do they decide? Uh, what are their, what information is there? You know, everybody wants to know. And as I said, on average, there are about 223 algorithms that all the major search engines uh, focus on. Um, so, you know, specific information they look for: is it a quality website or is it a spam site? They look at page relevancy: are there micro data, metadata, rich snippet, schemas? Is all the backend coding appropriate and within their quality guidelines? They look at backlinks, links to your site from other sites. They look at your actual website design. Is it today's age, you know, is it a responsive design website? They are analyzing load times. How quickly does it take for your website to actually come up? Is it mobile friendly? Is the content unique? Do you have authorship established? Uh, how much traffic is actually coming to this site? Are you getting social engagement? So these are just a few of the major things that they actually do look at. And they take all this kind of in, into one big ball and then identify and determine kind of your overall website and the quality of that site. And again, that's kind of what will determine uh, your overall SEO ranking and will uh, further determine whether or not your website actually comes up in the search engines on page one uh, and or beyond that. Really you should understand that you cannot outsmart the search engines and this is where our, our business kind of evolved was because there were so many companies out there frankly that would offer big uh, SEO solutions and the things that they would do were typically black hat things like uh, hiding um, keywords or keyword stuffing, um, doing link farming, uh, backlinking uh, to sites that weren't relevant, a lot of different things to try to manipulate or beat Google, Yahoo, and Bing. And um, sure enough, those work as a short-term solution, but long-term they don't. And in fact, uh, they can jeopardize your, your website itself. We've actually had clients where they in fact have lost their domain, their primary business domain was blacklisted because of uh, some of those black hat techniques that unbeknownst to them, the SEO company they had hired were actually incorporating. So just to give you guys an idea, organic search is going to continue to evolve. Uh, right now you'll see you have up at the top in this particular search uh, what they call the Google Carousel. And the carousel is based kind of on industry. So if you're looking for things like restaurants, uh, things that are local in your area, Google is doing a very good job at identifying based on uh, IP address registration, sign in information, uh, your immediate area, and will actually net results based on that. The organic side are actually uh, the listings that c fall below the carousel. And usually you'll see, like in this example, there is one ad, uh, it looks like here, a PPC, um, just directly below the carousel. So the organic are really the listings that fall underneath the local and the PPC um, that come up naturally. Obviously, if you're watching this today, you should know, you know, why bother with SEO? Because SEO is a branch, it's an extended tool that you can utilize to further drive traffic, grow your brand, your visibility, and attain more business and leads uh, through your website. So it is definitely an important component, will continue to be an important component, uh, despite some of the uh, critics out there and some of the changes that even Google's making, um, SEO will always be around. Latest research suggests obviously that 80% of searchers ignore obviously the PPC. Um, that's still kind of uh, uh, starting to kind of evolve uh, because more and more companies and businesses are starting to further engage in PPC. Uh, so there's kind of a twist and a mix there. Uh, but 85% of all web traffic really starts at the actual search engine. So meaning people actually will go to Google, Yahoo, and Bing 85% of the time in order to find uh, what they're looking for versus just kind of maybe having uh, their domain memorized or having it in a bookmark or a favorite. 
I want to talk a little bit about Google Panda. Google Panda, for those of you who don't know, it's a, one of the major algorithmic components of uh, you know SEO. It was launched and deployed in February 2011. Really, what Google Panda is, uh, focuses on is it's tasked with analyzing content within websites. It's going to determine kind of a page ranking score uh, on each page of your website, making sure that the content is unique. It also is looking at kind of verification of your your authorship. Is there an actual author who has claimed and set up and gone through that process uh, so that your content is not only protected uh, that it is unique and valuable so that's just kind of an overview of what panda uh, does and what their that algorithm is tasked with or mo there's multiple algorithms within panda but really that's what it looks at is more the content base making sure that you actually have some value to provide to your audience and that it's not just kind of copy pasted uh, or thin for that matter Google does have strict quality guidelines that they recommend they don't specifically identify you know this is exactly what you need to do because then that would disrupt obviously the integrity of the entire search engine but uh, if you have say 10 web pages within your website and eight of them have less than 120 words you know that could be potentially uh, violating Google's quality guidelines and what they suggest you know they don't want a website that's just loaded with a bunch of pictures and very few content because typically those are associated with spam sites or pop-up sites things of that nature so you really want to be able to express the value and show the services and products that you have to offer or the topics that you're talking about uh, within your website and do so appropriately and make sure that you meet those requirements and that's one thing that at Obzona we actually will do is go in and actually analyze uh, the content within your website, making sure that there's hyperlinks, keyword density ratios, things of that nature that are still an important component of your overall SEO. Then there's Google Penguin. Google Penguin's another one of the algorithms. That was launched in April 2012. Uh, really, Google Penguin, in my opinion, evolved as a result of a bunch of uh, companies out there the and even just I guess uh, marketing folks and people that are in the SEO world um, not that everyone was doing it but people that were basically um, manipulating Google search results by uh, software with uh, link farming uh, fake links outsourced links and also uh, software that would hit websites you know millions of times a day so it showed you know Google on the the front end that here's a website that's getting a bunch of you know targeted or, or a bunch of hits and a bunch of traffic and by the way they have you know 30,000 backlinks so typically at that time Google really didn't have the robustness uh, of their algorithms that they have today in place so it, it did work subsequently um, so those sites would typically be ranked higher and would show up on page one well Google Penguin uh, basically was launched to go and attack and penalize sites that were basically using those manipulative tactics it will actually go in and analyze uh, you know the IP addresses um, it'll show and analyze where uh, what types of backlinks and where they're coming from are they coming from overseas why would a, a, a backlink to you know a local mom-and-pop shop from India be there and what's the relevancy um, not to say that that would never happen but if you start seeing the scalability of that and start analyzing you know if they're getting 300 backlinks you know from various other countries and they only serve you know uh, a certain area that's not relevant and even the links that those are coming from aren't relevant they're gonna get penalized so Google Penguin has done great I you know a lot of uh, true SEOs like myself we love these algorithms because at the end of the day Google's trying to level the playing field for everybody and to, trying to make it fair and really serve up the best results to their audience and to their viewers so um, it's really great that you know they have Penguin and as I said it's tasked with basically flushing out um, any uh, black hat techniques and penalizing those that do more recently, there's Google Hummingbird. Uh, Hummingbird launched in August of this year, 2013. Really, it's aimed at delivering faster, more precise results to users. Um, and really, it's, it's kind of taking into consideration the, the Penguin and the Panda aspects. So it's taking in all the data and intelligence that Panda and Penguin is constantly uh, producing and providing to Google and uh, taking that up a notch and kind of further dissecting that so that uh, the results are faster and more precise. It is also seeking 
speaking to uh, there's a component of it that has the vocal or the conversational searches so for some of you who actually talk to Google kind of like maybe some of you know like Surrey with uh, Apple uh, Google has basically kind of the same type of technology where you can vocally say you know what is the birthday of George Washington and then uh, it would display results based on that Hummingbird is really kind of the component in the algorithm that is making sure that those results are uh, fast, that they are precise. And it also will um, dissect and kind of eliminate unnecessary words. So uh, what would be kind of like a long tail keyword um, or run on sentence, it will remove some of the, 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 the verbs, if you will, and really just, you know, allow itself to identify the meat and potatoes uh, of what you're trying to look for and then deliver that result. Part of the things, you know, one of the things that we really like to preach and practice is that, you know, you need to accept that, you know, normal business rules apply to the Internet. Um, you know, a lot of companies and businesses out there assume that Internet marketing is free. It's easy. It's, you know, like flipping on a, a light switch. Um, if you really want long-term sustainable results, that is not the case. Um, you are going to have to earn that and you're going to have to sustain it and maintain it. And in order to do that, you have to think of the internet and your website as a living, breathing mechanism and a tool that can actually uh, further bolster your business. So obviously on-site optimization is still relevant. You know, content is still king. Uh, making sure that you have unique content. Make sure that you have uh, Google authorship in place. Uh, make sure that you have keywords uh, that are relevant on, on your site as well as on the back end. You know, the search engines and those bots, they need to be able to uh, basically mine your web page and your website. And they don't see your website the way you and I see it. They see it kind of just as code. So making sure that that metadata, microdata, rich snippets where applicable um, are incorporated appropriately um, will actually help further your website SEO and uh, presence. So that still does actually hold true today and in fact it's leaning more and more towards the content side. Link building obviously is still kind of a component um, of it. Google, you know, they're starting to kind of pull the blind over uh, people as far as the view of keywords and things like that. Keywords are still going to be a component of it, but it's really going to be, um, you know, the social aspect, the link building, the content, and it's all going to kind of come together in, in that kind of world, if you will. So make sure that if you are engaged in link building, that you are actually looking at what types of links you're getting and where they're coming from. Um, Google Webmaster Tool does have the ability to give you that visibility. And let's be real, there are high ranking authority sites that Google recognizes that are trusted. So some of you, uh, you know, you, the .govs, the .edu, the .mil, um, any recognized media based publication or website like Fox News, CNN, those type of sites carry high ranking authority with the search engine simply because of their credibility and, and their establishments. So if you're able to attain links from those type of sites that are relevant and that um, aren't necessarily paid for, then that'll actually help maintain your health, uh, the health of your SEO. So definitely continue to look at those. Review sites are certainly good as well. Make sure that you're actually pushing to get and continue to get reviews on Yelp, Google Places, Angie's List, uh, things of that nature because again those are actually a com uh, combination or taken into consideration of uh, your overall SEO um, score. At the end of the day your business or whoever's actually managing your digital marketing are responsible for the success so make sure that you're at least engaged and up to date with uh, whoever it is you're working with they should definitely be providing you with uh, information and actually guiding you through that information as well as giving you strategy as far as what their the future is going to hold and where that's going to correlate with what you want in terms of your business model and any changes to your business model you know the future really is going to be a component of uh, not only the the organic and the SEO side but you're going to start to see more and more incorporation of the social media because social media is the no, new world word of mouth if you will people go on social media they share their thoughts feelings they look for recommendations uh, you're you've seen already Google places is now merged into Google plus for business and that is an actual social component so social rankings is is continuing to grow and that's where uh, SEO will also kind of t 
tie into. So, you know, some of the old ways as far as, you know, the keywords and, and the backlinks and all that are still applicable, but it's kind of like a scale. So you have to adjust the scale accordingly. And as things continue to evolve, making sure that that scale uh, is within compliance, but also um, adjusted so that it's benefiting your business and maintaining your visibility. So just to kind of recap, you know, in 2014, obviously making sure that you have a mobile friendly or mobile app, uh, you know, developed on your website. Uh, your website isn't going to come up. Google's never going to display it in, on a local level if uh, it's not mobile friendly. If I'm having to, you know, search for a restaurant, I click on your, your restaurant and then you don't have a mobile friendly website, I'm going to have to zoom in, zoom out. It's going to be more of a headache for me. I'm going to click the back button. That's going to give you a bounce and over time you're going to be buried. So making sure that you have a mobile friendly site is foremost. Um, Author ranking, as I said, that's very big. Um, Google has shifted away from kind of the publisher ranking and, and being more author based now. Um, so that way, you know, you have an author who is contributing um, high quality, rich, unique content to your website and to your blogs. Uh, diversified results. You know, before Google, you might have typed in a couple different keyword phrases and you'd see maybe the same company um, come up multiple times. And that's going to start kind of being eliminated. Again, Google wants to level the playing field, so uh, they're going to have more diversified results in the SERPs. Uh, so, you know, it's not going to be the same URL multiple times. So, just bear that in mind. Make sure that, you know, whoever is managing your digital marketing is on top of this. Uh, I just wanted to take a few moments and uh, put this together because, as I said, we get a lot of people who continue to ask me about the, the Google and the newest changes and all of that. So I thank you for your time. And certainly, if any of you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us through opzona.com. Uh, We're more than happy to go in and help you and your business out and make sure that you guys are actually getting what you're paying for in the digital and SEO world. Thank you so much.